Having a standard time of the day to exercise is one of the best hacks I've found to be consistent with my workouts. For me, this time is early in the morning, while most of the town is still asleep and no one is getting in my way. The more I stick to this schedule, the more effortless and enjoyable training is. Yet, when something disrupts my program and I end up skipping my morning workout, I find that I struggle to do it any other time of the day. What is up bodyweight exercise fans? It's 8 a.m. I've already trained. I just had my cold shower. I'm enjoying now a cup of nice warm green organic tea. And today we'll be talking about backup workout plans. No matter how well organized, productive and awesome you are, there will always be days when things get in the way of your workout. Either that's a work or family emergency, for example. Maybe you couldn't sleep last night and you didn't have energy to get up early in the morning. Or maybe you're just not feeling it today. Maybe you just woke up on the wrong side of the bed and you're just not in the mood to train at all. So what do you do on such days? Do you just say, mm, screw it, I won't train at all? Well, that's okay as well if it happens once in a while, especially if you've been really consistent with your training the last six or eight weeks. But if you do sense that you'd feel a lot better if you somehow found a way to squeeze a workout later in the day, which is typical the case for me, you know, even when I'm not in the mood to train at all, when I don't have the time, I'm stressed or whatever the case is, I always know that if I somehow find a way to train, I'll feel a lot better. So uh, if that's the case, then backup workout plans are the best tool I found to use on such scenarios. As Brian Fox says in one of my new favorite books on productivity and habit forming, when motivation is on the low side, we need to compensate by making the behavior tiny. In other words, during those out of sync days, it's far better to maintain your momentum and keep your habit of working out alive by minimizing it instead of not doing it at all. Just like with most habits and skills, you want to develop consistent practice over time is what generates the best results in the long run. It's not about always having that amazing record-breaking workout, you know, that will happen maybe once every two months, but that's occasional. Finally, the more you use backup workouts, the more you realize that those days that you don't feel like training are actually the days that you need your workouts the most, both mentally and physically. In summary, backup workout plans are alternative, short and practical workouts you can use anytime things are not going your way and I consider these essential to have in your workout routine arsenal. So no matter what day I'm having, I never ever skip warming up since this is a strategy that has kept me almost completely injury free the last 8 years. This is why I've created a backup warm up routine for my backup workout routine and I find this to be the shortest, most condensed and efficient warm-up one can do prior to a bodyweight workout. The warm-up consists of five exercises that cover the whole body and once you get familiar with it, it won't take you any more than four minutes to complete. Lie prone on the floor and bring your arms to the front with your palms facing the ground or floor and next, move your arms backwards, rotating your palms upwards until they facing the sky or ceiling next to your thighs. Now that's the movement your arms are performing, but it's also important to maintain proper form in the rest of the body. Here's how that looks. Lift your lower body so that the part from your knees and below stays above ground. Your glutes should be tight so that your lower back feels light. Your knees should be straight quadriceps are also tight, and toes are pointed backwards. Your head should be looking downwards so that your cervical spine is in neutral position. Finally, lift your torso slightly so that your upper chest and head are not touching the floor. 
This is my favorite spine and lower back mobility exercise. Lie on your back, extend your arms and press your palms slightly against the floor. Keep your upper body as stable as possible and roll your knees to the right and left. Keep your shoulders as much as possible in contact with the ground at all time. These are great for warming up the lower body, especially the knees and hamstrings. Place your feet at an arm's length distance, press your heels against the floor and bring your pelvis to a height where the knees, pelvis and shoulders are aligned, squeeze your glutes at the top and go down again. Assume a straight elbow plank position and start the exercise by pushing your torso away from the floor. To do this, you'll have to protract your shoulder blades. Next, allow your torso to sink downwards, this time by retracting your shoulder blades. Your knees should be locked and your quadriceps flexed. This will help you keep the body in a straight line and not allow the pelvis to sink. Most people will tend to bend their elbows on the way down when they first try this exercise, since it's something we're used to do when we're doing push-ups. So be careful not to do that. Movement should be produced only through the shoulder blades, while the rest of the body is properly aligned in a plank position. There are enough tutorials on squats online, so I won't elaborate on form here. Just keep your squats as clean as possible and use a range of motion that doesn't feel forced since you're still warming up. You want to aim for 8 to 20 reps depending on personal relative strength levels and how accustomed you are with each exercise. In general, go for a number of reps you can do smoothly using proper form while staying away from failure. The most important thing about backup workout plans is to always have them pre-planned. That way you won't have to put in the extra effort of deciding how to train during a day that focus, patience and motivation levels are already compromised. Your workouts should also be workouts you enjoy, so pick your favorite exercises and set up a training routine that you'd gladly do on most occasions. Make it short enough so that it's practical but also dynamic enough so that it allows you to blow off some steam during a stressful day. Finally, the main condition that I consider mandatory for my backup workouts is that they are whole body. As I mentioned in my previous video, when it comes to program design, my favorite motto is that if it's important, do it every day. If it's not important, don't do it at all. This is why my backup workout routine consists of three exercises that all together cover the whole body, a pulling exercise, a pushing exercise, and a lower body exercise that is usually more dynamic and will elevate my heart rate. I perform these exercises as a mini circuit, taking 15 seconds of rest between each exercise and two to four minutes of rest between each round. If I'm really pressured by time, I'll stick to the more lower two minute range, which allows you to complete this workout in less than 15 minutes. But if I'm not in a hurry, I'll take four whole minutes to rest since I like allowing my body to recover as much as possible in order to perform close to max capacity in each round. Here's how my typical backup workout plan looks. I will usually start with an upper pull exercise. Your top choice here are pull-ups or assisted pull-ups if you can't do regular pull-ups. But you can also do inverted rows if you have any kind of suspension training system, such as gymnastic rigs. If you have no equipment at all and nothing to hang from to do your pull-ups, another great exercise for the posterior chain are weighted prone angels. Use half a liter water bottles if you're a beginner or one and a half liter if you're more advanced. Although ring dips are my number one pushing exercise for building strong, lean and functional muscle, during a backup workout, I'll usually go for my second favorite pushing exercise, push-ups, mainly due to the fact that they don't require setting up any equipment. For my third lower body exercise, depending on the location I train that day, I'll either go for hill sprints or vertical jumps. Other dynamic bodyweight options are jumping lunges, plyo burpees, or if you want something more static and knee-friendly, wall sits. You can also do these single-legged in order to make them more challenging. 
As to rep range, I aim for a number that will bring me close to momentary muscle failure, that is doing as many reps as possible while maintaining perfect technique, but also a number which I can maintain relatively consistent throughout all three rounds. Now, do not underestimate this workout just because it's so small. To my surprise, when I first started using these backup workouts, I observed the next day muscle soreness, which was really weird for me because I would be doing these really longer and uh, in my head more intense workouts and I would rarely feel any muscle soreness for weeks and then suddenly I would do this alternative workout just not to just in order not to skip my workout that day and I would feel sore the next day so in the beginning my hunch was that this was mainly due to the fact that when I did do my backup workout plans I would be more stressed you know I would be more on edge so I would push myself harder during the workout but later on I realized that okay that might be one reason but the other reason is that because the workout is so small you can actually push yourself a lot harder so by minimizing basically training volume you can maximize training intensity so by focusing on two rounds and three exercises uh, i can push myself really hard through each rep and each set not having to think that i have to reserve a little bit of energy for the whole workout in order to have a no consistent rep range and all of that. Of course, this won't work if you do it every day, but if you practice this occasionally, it can be a really effective workout plan. You know, not just something you do in order not to miss your workout and in order to keep the habit of working out alive, but you know, also something that is really effective, both in terms of gaining muscle and strength. Finally, remember that backup workout plans will always help you feel better once you're done. They will help you deal with stressful days. They will um, give you a sense of confidence and momentum once you're finished with the workout that will also carry on to other tasks of the day and other obstacles you might have to overcome. That was all for today. If you like this video, click on the like button below. And if you didn't like this video, click on the dislike button. I prefer that you take any action than none at all. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you really want to help this channel grow, click on the share button and share this video on any other social media platform of your preference. And all next time, keep on training.